Hello there people of the internet. A little bit different of a video this time. There's been multiple times where I've had people ask me what sort of gun tubers I enjoy watching. So let's go ahead and make a video talking about various other gun channels. So I myself, I'm a military surplus guy. This gun channel that I do here typically revolves around military surplus. As a matter of fact, I was out here filming a video earlier today with my Yugo 2447 an 8mm Mauser and my Mosin Nagant M44 which has a little spiky bayonet on the side which everybody seems to love. Throw that up and now I can jab things with it if I feel like. And if you enjoy military surplus firearms much like I do then you're in the right crowd so go ahead and subscribe to the channel because that will help me become one of the great channels that I am going to reference because by all means I am bound and determined to get my name out there and thrown into conversation among the greats. I want people to be able to compare me with various other gun channels that are out there but before they can do that they have to know that I exist. So speaking of gun channels, what gun channels do I enjoy watching? <clears throat> I would say just because of my preferences and the things that I enjoy, like for example, military surplus and the history and development and mechanical natures of all of these rifles, uh, if that sounds familiar to you, that's because you're probably a fan of Forgotten Weapons. Ian McCollum over at Forgotten Weapons is probably one of my all-time favorite YouTubers to watch. I literally sit there and binge his videos sometimes repeatedly. I don't know how many times I've watched his history on the Thompson or history on lever actions or history on French rifles or you know his various uh, history series where he talks about various different rifles and various different developments and whatnot. He does a really really good job at presenting all these rifles, the history and development of them, where they came from, why they exist, the purpose behind them, the intentions behind them, and the mechanical natures of how it is that they actually work. He is one of my all time favorite YouTubers. Another one, TFB TV, specifically Hops and James Reeves over there. I love those guys. I love watching them. I love watching their work. They do a really, really good job at showing off all sorts of different things without going into the uh, nonsense of politics and whatnot. I absolutely uh, understand the importance of getting behind and utilizing our, what's the word I'm looking for? Influence? For political natures, this way we don't lose ground politically standing and we don't lose our rights. However, there's different points in time where you should have different discussions. If I'm over here talking about this particular firearm with this particular thing, I'm not going to go off on a tangent about some politician who's in some other part of the country. I'll save that for another video whenever we decide to go ahead and get political and TFB TV is really good at not getting political which some other people decide to uh, decide to do and that absolutely takes away from enjoying the content of a particular firearm that I'm looking to watch not only that but James Reeves and Hop over there have just absolutely fantastic personalities so another one, Demo Ranch. Everybody loves watching Demo Ranch. I love watching Matt blow stuff up. And uh, on top of Demo Ranch, he just he just seems like he's a really, really awesome guy with all of his uh, various other things that he does. I love his early veterinarian work where he used to show that stuff off. And I love uh, the vehicles and whatnot that he plays with as well. It's not necessarily just about firearms with Demo Ranch. And uh, personally, I would love to get large enough on the YouTube channel to where I'm able to uh, meet not only Matt, but various other gun tubers as my own channel grows. That's a really, really, really good way to get more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Make more friends, and friends can be power. But on top of Demo Ranch, one of my one of my like absolute all-time favorite YouTubers, probably like really up there on the top tier of the list, is probably gonna be Kentucky Ballistics. I love watching Kentucky Ballistics blow stuff up and use really large recoiling rounds like on things that you would never use these rifles on. Like for example, a four bore rifle on ballistics gel. Never thought I'd see that until he shows up with 16 blocks of ballistic gel ready to put a thumb in his neck again. He's the only man I know who took a 50 BMG literally to the face and survived. Uh, yeah, Scott is absolutely incredible over there in Kentucky Ballistics. And he is also somebody I would like to meet, even if it's just to shake his hand. Hey, how you doing? And hopefully I'll get that chance one of these days.
On top of Kentucky Ballistics, another of my very, very, very big go-tos is Brandon Herrera. As a matter of fact, Brandon Herrera, uh, back whenever he was uh, very, his channel was very, very young, only a few thousand subscribers, uh, back in like 2018, 2019, maybe 2018, uh, sometime around that time period, I actually managed to get in contact with Brandon Herrera, and he gave me some really good advice for running this YouTube channel that I am currently running. And uh, I have sent him a message to thank him, but now he's a big time YouTuber and he has no idea that I exist. But I still feel better knowing that I thanked him, even if uh, he did not have the opportunity to listen. But he has so much resources whenever it comes to making these YouTube channels and whatnot. He's got a Type 7 FFL, so he can just play with things that I cannot get my hands on. And he has a lot of fun doing what it is that he does, clearly. And he is getting political and he's at that point in time uh, able to separate politics very effectively you know very effectively getting into politics with uh, with his firearm stuff very effectively enjoying his firearm stuff and that is a good split between doing the things that need to be done and doing the things that people enjoy watching so he does it extremely well and like I said before, I would absolutely love to get the chance to shake this man's hand and say hey I really enjoy what it is that you do so, Brandon Herrera, he was one of them. Um, admin results. Actually, he's got a couple of different YouTube channels. Now, I was not expecting him to be so handsome whenever he pulled off his balaclava finally and we saw his face. Really not expecting that. But boy, is he funny. Boy, does he have a gr just a great attitude altogether. He's definitely somebody that I would, like, hell, I'd want to get a beer with him in all honesty. I'd also want to party with James Reeves in all honesty. <laughs> that would be one hell of a time i would definitely i would definitely go out of my way to make that happen admin results he is definitely another top tier t youtuber that i would you know call one of my all-time favorites military arms channel he's also a really 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 good one very very informative i would uh just the amount of knowledge the amount of knowledge that this guy is able to present in a very focused way without going on tangents and whatnot and whenever he does start talking about things he transitions into topics just incredibly well he is very 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 good at his presentations and what it is that he actually does another really really good youtuber or another good gun channel that i guess you can go check out uh, akou ak operators union with rob ski uh, Rob Ski, I'm not sure if he's from another country or not. I think that he is, from what I have been able to gather. But I also don't want to put my foot in my mouth and make that assumption whenever I'm simply not sure about it. But I'm pretty sure that he used to deal with communism back in the day. And he has found uh, the freedom of the United States. And he has a prolonged, absolute love for the AK platforms. So he is also one that I enjoy watching. He has a vintage rifle shooter club where he goes out and he shoots all sorts of different vintage rifles. And as you can tell, that is right up my alley. So yeah, Rob Ski, I enjoy watching his work as well. And then of course, there's the smaller time YouTube channels that I know of that I watch pretty regularly that uh, I've done collaborations with. Speaking of, if you are a YouTube channel out there looking to collaborate, then hey, by all means, let me know and we will make something happen. But I've got various YouTube channels and YouTube uh, gun channels that I collaborate with and I watch these guys work on a pretty regular basis. As a matter of fact, not too long ago, I watched 8mm Mauser Man. Uh, I watched his Hakeem videos, and unfortunately he got burned by RTI. His Hakeem is really not all that good. At least it functions, but boy does it keyhole like the Dickens, and it is not accurate. Or readiness reviews. I know I talked, I talked with him about doing uh, collabs before. Didn't necessarily work out, but I still really like him and his stuff. As a matter of fact, literally today I just watched an unbox uh, an M95 that he got from RTI. So that was very awesome. Besides that, uh, Joe Morgan, he lets off a good number of rants. Some of them are pretty funny and some of them are actually incredibly insightful. Uh, Joe Morgan, we got, we got guns, guns, gear, and guns with Geary Gunderson. I really, really, really like the way that he presents things. Uh, we got great Northwest weaponry. I really like his setup and just the way that he displays and portrays himself. He's incredibly good at what he does. I think that he has a lot of potential to become something really amazing. 
So if any of these gun channels uh, pique your interest, then by all means, you can go look them up on YouTube. And uh, there's probably some that I'm not even uh, thinking of right now because there's quite a few out there that I watch pretty regularly that literally they just they just pop up on my YouTube feed. I'm like, hey, that looks very interesting. And I'm going to go ahead and go check that one out. If you have any gun channel recommendations that I did not bring up, then go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. And odds are I've already checked them out at least once or twice. But those ones that I've listed, those are pretty much the main ones that I go after. But I also don't have a whole lot of time to spare to just sit there and watch YouTube videos because I'm out here making them myself and trying to make myself into <clears throat> something significant. So on top of all this, I think, because I am in fact a gun channel, I think I'm going to go ahead and send a couple of rounds down range with the rifles I have out here because I just so happen to have some rounds in my pockets. Let's start off with the Yugo Mauser. This stuff is Turkish ammo. I'm going to fire through it if this stuff actually fires. And uh, this is corrosive ammunition. And so as a result, I do have to clean this rifle. I have made several videos on cleaning corrosive ammunition, uh, including shorts. So if you only want to spare 60 seconds to go check that out, then go ahead and go check that out and you will learn how to clean corrosive ammo out of your bolt action rifle if you decide to go ahead and utilize some surplus. So these are 155 grain projectiles. And with the year of production being early World War II, I would bet that these are gonna travel about 3150 to 3200 feet per second uh if you get well it depends on the batch really but if you get uh like pre-world war ii and late world war ii batches of this stuff then this turkish ammo tends to be more around that 3,000 foot per second mark so it really does depend on the batch it is that you get but i have seen this stuff chronographed and they can be incredibly mixed results ow my shoulder i've been out here shooting guns all day long making videos and enjoying myself. And I'll tell you what, this right here definitely recoils quite fiercely. You know what, I think I have some, one of these pockets. Uh, this one, I got some 7.62 by 54 rimmed and we got the bayonet already out on our M44 so I can't not shoot this. This right here sends about the same weight bullet, a why a, a one yeah 147 ish grain projectile at about 2800 feet per second so a little bit lighter weight a little bit slower a little tiny bit less energy behind these rounds now of course these rounds right here specifically what is that this oh it's a butterfly there's a butterfly moving around out there these rounds specifically are probably going to go a little bit slower because that 2800 feet per second mark is from a full length mosin which this one is not. And so as a result of this one not being a full length Mosin, uh, I'm going to have to deal with having my teeth rearranged because the muzzle blast that comes out of this thing is absolutely insane. I don't have a particular target down there, so I'm just gonna aim at the car. <laughs> that was cool, I'm glad I just aimed at the car. I'm gonna aim for that spot again. Well, nothing happened that time. Let me aim for the back of the car and we'll see what happens. Not a bunch of nothing. So I guess all I did with that was uh, put some more holes in the car. I ought to look into getting myself another steel target. Mine kind of fell apart from the thousand videos I've made shooting at it. The literal thousand videos I have shooting that steel. Anyway, folks, thank you ever so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I will see you guys on the next episode. I've done this.
Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> Poor man's Garrett. <laughs> it's a shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream. <laughs>